everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock TO Studio, and today I am part of a video hop that is called Come to My Window, organized by Susan Hiles. All the rest of the people who are participating, their video links will be below my video. After you're done watching my video, go and click on all the links, visit all the people who participated and see their beautiful art, and then give them a thumbs up and and a comment and just give them some love. So I had so many ideas of how to approach this topic come to my window. I, I had just so many things swimming around in my head and I couldn't settle and I decided to just take it very very literally <laughs> that I would just show a scene from what I might see out my window. My studio faces to the west and the sun sets in the west so when I'm in my studio in the evening, I can see beautiful sunsets, particularly as we wind down the monsoon season here. We've been having some thunderstorms, some clouds, and those, those type of weather make gorgeous sunsets in Arizona. Oranges and yellows and pinks and, and uh, you know, you normally have a very bright blue sky. As the sun sets, you get those colors coming in from the edge of the mountains and then of course my studio overlooks a natural area that's it's called a wash which is basically a dry creek and in the monsoons we get water in it so it has a lot of plants in it so I decided to just create a scene that looks something like that I had a couple reference photos that had been taken recently outside um, of the sunset and so I decided to do something different I haven't done for a while on my channel and that is to do a little bit of watercolor with some um, Ken Oliver powders and some Brusho crystals. Both of these products are similar. The Brusho crystals are a little bit chunkier and the color blends are different. Basically what they are is just really intense pigment in a powdered form crushed up pigment that reacts to water and the colors are blended with different colors of pigments that when mixed with water turn into a color so what comes out of the the container isn't necessarily what you end up with with the water um, by the time you put water on it you can put water on the paper first or put water on the paper after I'm kind of doing a combination of those and I did put some tape around to mask. I also wanted to mask the little half half disc sunshine and I put on some masking fluid that's a, a in a pen and it didn't work. You'll see that it just basically destroyed the paper. <laughs> uh, I guess the pen nib is gunked up and the fluid inside is not flowing out and I just need to figure out what to do with it but I ended up fixing it a different way in the end. So I started out by putting a masking line where my uh, my horizon line is and then putting some water at the very base and adding some lemon yellow and and it started to blend with the water but then I came back in with a brush and blended it a little bit more and then I put some more water along that line and added in some uh, ochre, yellow ochre color powder and then I did it again and added some indigo and some turquoise at the top. And I'm just adding water, taking away water, trying to get the look of a sky with a little bit of fluffy clouds as the sun sets. I also end up throwing in some orange I think at some point. But it's just a process of adding and taking away, adding and taking away, putting the water on, using some paper towels to sop up some areas where it gets too wet, blending the colors together, and it's really, it's experimentation. The thing about watercoloring with the brushes is that, or and the Ken Oliver powders, is that you just, you really don't know what you're going to get. It's, it's a very fluid, very unpredictable process. So you just work with it until you are happy 
I added some brown over on one side, then I added back in some more of that indigo. Just trying to get that effect as if it's that sky like is in the reference photo on the left. And is it perfect? No. Is it going to be perfect? No. <laughs> so then I wanted to start working on my land mass. So I put some more tape across the horizon line and started in with uh, sienna and um, sepia and brown. And then there's a, like an olive green and a lime green or leaf green, some yellow, some orange to start building up the bottom section. So kind of the same process. <clears throat> I'm putting it down some water. I'm sprinkling on some of the powders or crystals, blending it a little bit with more water. And for all this process, I'm using a large flat brush. I just happened to have that one. I, it wasn't a specific reason. I do end up switching brushes at some point, but at, at this point in time, I'm just trying to get the colors, the blocks of colors the way I want them. So having a larger brush gives you some more water, but this isn't actually a watercolor brush. And uh, I thought to myself at some point, oh, I should get out my watercolor brush. I have some nice brushes that I keep specifically for watercolor. I don't use them for anything else so that they don't get messed up with putting acrylics and mediums in them. So I get them out at some point. <coughs> I don't know when. So I'm drying this off and I peel off my tape and then I end up, my horizon line seeped. The, the paper wasn't completely dry when I put the masking tape on it and the, the color seeped under it, which I don't like. But I can't really fix it at this point. I mean, I, I put on some plain clear water in different areas. And here's where I get my watercolor brush out. Um, putting on some just clear water and then lifting it with a towel. And I do try to do that along that horizon line. In the end, it doesn't really affect the composition. But boy, was I mad when, I, when that first happened. <laughs> like, dang it. I just spent all this time making this background all beautiful with this beautiful horizon line and I get this. But it's very organic. It almost looks like cloud, cloud lines, so it ends up being fine. So right now I'm just putting on different, just plain water and lifting it. Then I decide I'm gonna take my masking fluid off and I realize that it's not gonna come off and that it's ruined the paper right there. It's very peeled and and messed up. So I put some gesso on to strengthen the paper and to lighten that area where the sun disc is going down. And then I start adding in some of my focal images using a pencil, just drawing them so that I can kind of see what I'm doing. And at first I'm just using my graphite pencil and then I switch to this Stabilo All graphite pencil, which is highly water reactive. So some of the pencil lines will be blended in when I put some more water on there because it that one that gray one will blend with water really easy graphic graphite is water soluble but some of the harder ones don't blend as easy <clears throat> so then i get out a palette and i start sprinkling some of my uh, ken oliver color burst powders and some of my my brush oak crystals into the wells of the palette and using it by just blending it in, in with water and painting it directly on. And <clears throat> this brush that I'm using is called a dagger brush because it's wide at the bottom and then it comes to a very fine point in kind of a um, triangular shape. It's a different weird brush. But it works for this because I can press the bottom part of it down to get a wider wet space it holds a lot of water in it but then the very tip of it is very fine so i can add fine detail fine lines using the very tip of the brush i don't know how long these dagger brushes have been around but it's a pretty fun little 
treat for yourself, not super expensive if you want to get one and try it out. At least this one's not. It's not a, a pure um, type of hair on it. It's a golden tackle on synthetic bristles instead of like a squirrel or something. So it's not an expensive brush, but it's different and fun. So I added leaf green and olive green and um, yellow and a little bit of black and brown or that sepia color to my main focal cactus. This is a saguaro cactus. They grow to be uh, probably 12 feet tall. There's a, one that we call the grandfather cactus behind our house down in the wash. They, they grow slowly, but they grow for like 200 years. They're like a tree. They're the desert tree, basically. These cactuses bloom in the spring and they have kind of a white waxy bloom that, that blooms at the tops of the arms. The arms don't start growing until the cactus is quite mature. So if you see one that, if you see a cactus that's just a straight column, that's usually still a saguaro cactus. It's just that it hasn't aged enough to start growing the arms. And they don't, you know, always grow a single cactus with two arms hanging, sitting out on the side like you, like the iconic image. Uh, they have multiple arms and the older they get, the more arms they get and it's random. Birds uh, nest in them. They make holes and nest inside the ribs. And then once this saguaro does die and, and they're protected in our state, they're um, not, you're not allowed to dig them up or knock them down. But if it dies on its own, then as it starts to decay, you get this very interesting skeleton that looks kind of like, it looks like, that's why they call it ribs. It's got long, skinny ribs inside of it. That's where the ridges of the cactus are. It's a very interesting plant. State flower. So of course, I'm going to want to put grandfather cactus in the middle of my image. Because that's, you know, that's important for what I see out my window. <laughs> so then, of course, I have other cactus, uh, the most common one. It grows around here almost like a weed, is the prickly pear. It has a fruit right now on it here in the fall. You can harvest those fruits and make them into jam and jelly and Fig Newton type cookies. Uh, you just got to be careful of the spines. <laughs> need to use very thick gloves and then uh, roast them to burn off all the spines before you get the pulp out of it, pulp and seeds, and then you can blend it, strain it. You know, there's all kinds of ways to use it. So I had lifted up, off some of the color to show my prickly pear pads with their red fruit on the ends and then I added back in yellow and green to kind of make them more three-dimensional. I added in some claret color, which is a dark red um, Ken Oliver color to make the fruit. I added some more ones in the background to show that there are more tall, slen slender cactuses. And then coming in on the side on the right, there's a mesquite tree that has uh, lost its most of its leaves at this point because it's starting to become colder here. Colder, not cold. <laughs> so here I am adding a little piece of paper where that damaged paper is, where the sun disc is, um, because that paper, it was almost like a hole in the paper. You can see it on the back side. This piece of watercolor paper is 140 pound uh, cold press so it has uh, definite bumps in it. It's a little bit rough on this side. And it is from a journal that I created in 2017. And I just pulled a page out of it to use for this painting. So now I have some white India ink. And the thing about watercolor for me, I'm definitely not a pro at watercolor at all because I don't leave the white space. I have such a hard time leaving white space. So 
my solution to that is to use white India ink because it behaves like a lot like a watercolor, but it's opaque. Another option would be to use gouache, which is a kind of more opaque um, watercolor product, which I have a couple of wa gouaches too, but I just really like the India ink because it's it's easily blends with water, but is very opaque. So I can start to come in and add highlight and bring the white spaces back in my painting. This does make it mixed media because I'm using more than one media. I used, well, if you want to, if you think that the crystals and the powders are different, those are two different ones. I used pencil and of course I used India ink. So that makes this project mixed media. So I'm just adding in highlights thinking about the fact that the light source is in the center. So on the left side, my highlights need to be on the right side. And on the right side, my highlights need to be on the left side. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense, right? <laughs> also that uh, in the picture, there was some sun rays coming down, which I thought were kind of cool. So I included those in the painting. And I'm also trying to um, put a little bit of highlight up in the clouds too. I hope you've enjoyed this video and this painting. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment or question below, subscribe if you haven't already and turn on your notification bells. And you can certainly pin this to Pinterest or share it on Facebook. All those things are really helpful for those of us who are trying to, to build our channels here on YouTube. Also, don't forget to go below the video and click on the links to visit all the other artists who have worked hard to make a come to my window video for you. And thank you to Sue Hiles for organizing this hop. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.